Good morning, folks, and welcome to another episode of Mountain Speak. We're here in Glen Line to do four Monroes today, so hopefully, stick with us and uh, enjoy the views. Okay, folks, so yeah, we're here uh, in Glen Lyon. Um, we're going to be tackling four Monroes today, as I said. It's Cairn Gorm, uh, and that's not to be confused with Cairn Gorm. Uh, and as I said, it's Glen Line. So Cairn Gorm, Melgarve, uh, Cairn Merrig, and Craigmore, I think, are all the four. <laughs> Quite hard to remember them all. Uh, they're all around a thousand metres, so fairly big. Got my friend Chris with me today. He's going to be keeping me company, and uh, we're going to get cracking nice and early because it's a big hike today. But it's the first walk of the new year, and I'm looking forward to it. Um, been at work for a few weeks, and uh, I'm needing to stretch my legs, so I'm looking forward to this one, as I always am. So yeah, stick with it, we'll get some uh, good views, hopefully it's going to be a clear day. Uh, hopefully the sun kicks out now and again as well. So we'll get cracking. And uh, listen, don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, enjoy the content. I'll see you a bit further on. Okay folks, welcome back. Um, so we've progressed up through the side of this forest here, or along the side of this forest, on and off a hydro track. Um, it's quite uh, a wee bit of tr tricky navigation points there, because you have to actually stick to the deer fence and then come back onto a hydro track. And then the track kind of leads you towards this, this gate here. There's a little dam over there, which uh, you actually don't pass through. We're going to head up towards these large boulders here, and there's some green and orange posts, which um, is what we're following up to Cairn Gorm. So I think Cairn Gorm's around 1,030 metres or thereabouts. It's quite a big hill. Um, and we haven't really started properly ascending as yet. But the track's been good, the, the going's been good. But like I say, just a couple of wee tricky bits of navigation. I've tried to show them on the video, going through certain fences and styles. So we're just gonna, we're gonna head up here now um, and just traverse, apparently it's an old rickety metal bridge. So that should be fun. But yeah, first walk of the new year. Oh. Good to get out and about. 
And if we can just see the metal bridge just in the distance there with the green and orange post behind. But we're going to try and stick to them as far as they go anyway. Not sure how far up they go. Uh, aye. Good, the view behind me is stunning, but I think you'll probably get sunned out if I look around. There's only one other car in the car park, that's a, a young couple. And they're a bit ahead of us there. Pounding on, so we're going to head down here. I think this bridge has seen better days. <laughs> I think this bridge has seen better days. That'll be alright, eh? <laughs> I don't know, like, I'm, I'm quite heavy. <laughs> I think, eh, uh, I think one at a time I've been better with it. <laughs> it was bouncy. Wow, look at that. It's still bouncing. I mean, to be honest, you could probably cross that up there, look. And then cut across further along. But, uh, yeah, we'll just follow. There's another green post up there. So this is on to more of a grass track now, so we're going to stick to that. And crack on. Like I said, four mountains today. We'll talk a bit more about the next one when we get up there. Um, yeah, I should, uh, should get the last kick started for the new year anyway, that's for sure. Getting four in the bag. The views, man, are awesome. Absolutely awesome. Good thing you know, though. Nice fresh water. You don't need to bring a ton of water with you. Get some there. Mm. Right, I'll pop you away now, and uh, we'll head up. Yeah, he's getting some good photography. Right, we'll get him get a picture and see what happens. Speak to you further on. Okay folks, sorry for squinting, the sun's in my eyes. Where are we at? We're quite high. <laughs> I think we're about 680, 680 metres. Still got a wee bit to go, I don't know if you can see just up here. Um, nice, 26 minutes. Kilometre two apparently according to city. So, yeah, a fair bit to go yet. Yeah. That's quite a steep climb after you come past the forest. You start your real ascent. Um, the rest of those are kind of flatty section. Steep climbing, we're back on a small plateau again before we have another fairly steep looking climb up to the top of Carnarvon, which is just there obviously. Um, I think some of the ridge is hiding behind this hump here, um, and then we follow east towards the last one over there, which I'm still unsure of what the real name is because it has two names according to the maps. I'm not really sure. I'll maybe put it up in the bottom. But yeah, sun's out, we're happy, all good. Um, Chris is happy, yeah, Chris is happy. So, yeah, we're going to head up here, small cairn here, marker cairn. I don't know if that's for uh, um, poor or weather, you can just identify the track. There's a couple of posts I can see further along as well to follow as the track gets quite grassy. So we'll crack on for now, not too bad. A wee bit of sweat on us, we can hope that wouldn't happen, but it did. <laughs> so, yeah, all good, all good. Right, we'll push on, we'll see you further up. So 
basically folks, uh, the GoPro audio was so bad here that I've had to voice over this for you um, and this will be happening throughout the video from this point forward so please bear with me as much as you can. I was basically stating here that the wind chill was so low that my beard was freezing. Um, you can just see some ice on it there. Uh, it was pretty bad, pretty cold that's for sure. Uh, just checking out as well uh, what the name and height of the next mountain, uh, Melgarve, was. Um, but as you can see, the, the view from the top of Cairngorm is outstanding. Uh, to the south over my right shoulder you can see the Ben Laws group and the mighty Ben Laws standing prominent of all of them. And then uh, the direction I'm facing north is actually Loch Ranach. And uh, over to the kind of northwest you would maybe see Glencoe possibly being nervous on a clear day. But this was a good hike up here. The terrain was pretty good. Fairly well pathed out. Um, so there wasn't really any real navigation issues once you get on the hill. I felt a little bit tiring at stages, but not too bad. So we pushed on from here and on to Melgar. Number one, done. That's me fully zipped up, uh, hoods up, everything, trying to keep my face out of the wind as much as possible. It was actually quite painful uh, on the bare skin, that's, that's for sure. So, yeah, we're pushing on to Melgar, but first we have to tackle Anscor, which is a Monroe top. Um, this is the Bialach between Karangorm and Anscor, which is fairly flat and well pathed out. You can actually see a wee signpost in the background there. That's pointing over to Loch Ranach, which is absolutely stunning in itself, and looking south towards the Ben Laws group. Looking back up to Cam Gorm is absolutely stunning. Every time we turned around to look at that, it was beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So just gathering ourselves here in the flat section, just getting our breath back and uh, pushing on up Anshkor, which then leads on to Melgarva, our second Monroe for the day. This section was a little bit steep at points, um, but it just keeps you honest if you know what I mean it just keeps you earning the mountain. So onwards and upwards we pushed on to Monroe number two. So here we are folks on the summit of Melgarve, 968 metres. Quite enjoyed this summit, it's, it's a little bit more unusual for me so far as it's, it's quite a big flat plateau and most of the mountains I've been doing recently have been quite short uh, peaks where there's not much moving around, but at least you could get moving around this one. So I'm just pointing over to Monroe number three there, Karn Merg, um, in the distance it looks very far away. It was a bit of a walk to get to that one. Uh, you can just see the cairn there that's full of all the old fence posts, uh, nicknamed the uh, Iron Throne. Chris just sitting in the background there just catching up in some things. Uh, looking over to the, to the north there, to the Cairngorms. National Park. Again, Loch Rannock in the, in the distance there as well. Kraken Mountain, I really enjoyed this one. Um, and you, I could just point over, you can just see Glencoe Mountains and the, the Grey Quarries just in the distance as well. As usual, if you get the day for it, the views are absolutely outstanding. You can see so far. Absolutely love it. Absolutely brilliant. The mighty Cairn Gorm there we were just on and the Ben Laws in the distance as well. Superb. So the terrain up to here was pretty decent and there was no real issues, the path was pretty well laid out for us, um, navigation was never an issue either. Uh, if a little steep at sections just trying to make our way up here, but we made it no problem and we took a good, good wee breather to the top as well. Pushing onwards to Munro number 3, which was Karn Merg, yeah, this one was a bit more of a challenge. <laughs> Thank you. 
So we're still on our way to the third Munro, eh, Carnmerg. But we're hitting this Munro top, I think it's called Mel Avar, um, which is just up here. And it seems like a fairly long flat traverse over to number three. Which should be nice. Good legs, a wee bit of rest. It's quite a steep pull up to this Mel Avar. Um, one thing you know, it's quite rocky and that, which is good. I mean, it's decent terrain. And the points of path gets a bit lost, especially in this frosty condition where it's hard to define it. And um, there is areas where it's very easily defined, but just keep a heads up, keep an eye on your map and your, your GPS. But other than that, the going's been good, the speed's been good, I didn't realize how good actually, we were actually doing quite well, I was mourning about my fitness, but that's us about three and a half hours and we're just about to do the third peak, so I'm quite happy with that. The average pace is about 22 minutes a kilometre, so yeah, all good, all good. So we'll get this wee Monroe top here, we'll start traversing along, if we find a spot, it's kind of sheltered out the wind, and I think we'll stop and have lunch. Um, we were talking about food there, and I was getting hungry. <laughs> talking about scones and cream. Oh, man, I'm getting hungry again. So, as I said, going's good now. Cold or very cold. I've got to get the beard. So, there is a bit of weather just over in the Ben Laws. Good weather, if you can see. The weather over there. To be honest, the weather's held off for us most of the day. This is just on the phone, he's probably got a phone call, it's probably top of a really remote and raw 4G signal, taking phone calls, superb, loving it. Always helps to get you, uh, get you in contact with home and stuff, doesn't it? So, something to bear in mind, 4G signal at the top of these mountains. So anyway, I'll let you go just now, crack on up the top of this Melava, and uh, we'll see where we're at, we'll show you some scenery when we get there. This is at the top of Carmerg, uh, 1041 metres, it's quite a, quite a big hill. Um, the viewpoint looking backwards is absolutely outstanding. So we're quite happy to get here, but we're at this stage now where we're getting quite hungry and we were looking forward to getting something to eat. But the wind had really kicked up here and um, it was really starting to bite into us. So we were keen to kind of get moving off this hill, so we didn't spend too much time on it. Um, but we did take in the, the views, it just, I can't help saying that, but there's one thing videoing it and taking pictures of it and stuff like that, but see actually being up there and seeing it with your own eyes is outstanding. There's nothing compares to that whatsoever. One thing I did notice with speaking about my eyes, um, with the wind being so high and so piercing and cold, my eyes started blurring out quite quite badly at times. Um, I had to take quite a bit of time to, to keep them out of the wind and, and let them dry out, I feel like, a little bit, just so that I could kind of clearly see where I was going. It was very difficult to keep them open. I had toyed with the idea of putting my sunglasses on, which are wrap around it, but they maybe kept the wind out of them a little bit, so maybe something to bear in mind in the future. But Monroe number three done for today, and we were pushing on to our last Monroe of the day, Craig Vaugh, uh, Monroe number four. So here we are, folks, on Monroe number four, Craig Vaugh, 981 metres. There is a, a bit of a jump <laughs> here in the, in the vlog but the wind was just getting so strong, it was getting very, very difficult to vlog at this stage. Um, the the bialik, if you would like to call it, between Karn Merg and Craig Vore was, uh, was still quite high and quite exposed. Um, it wasn't too difficult to make our way across, but we did actually have a little bit of difficulty coming off of number three. We, we tried to get some shelter to have a lunch and we not lost the path, but just made it a little bit more difficult for ourselves trying to regain the path. So we had to actually backtrack a little bit and maybe even ascend a little section before meeting the path again. Overall, not too difficult, nothing to get too worried about, but just a little bit inconvenient. Just out of camera shot there is uh, the mountain Shahawin, which is which is quite well known in Scotland for being one of the more easier Munros. Um, I didn't actually realise that's what it was at first. I had to look it up, but it's uh, quite obvious in the in the shape of it now that you're looking at it, the standard kind of mountain shape, you know. So uh, that was quite interesting to see. 
So again, I'm just talking about the time here, how long it's taken us to do the do the mountains so far. I think overall, I think we spent about seven hours in total on on these mountains. But four mountains in seven hours is not to be not to be snubbed. That's for sure. I really enjoyed these four mountains. It was a really good walk, and if you were planning on a a multi uh, Monroe day, this would be certainly one to look into. It's one of the more easier multi Monroe days. That's for sure. Um, there's nothing too strenuous. You're up quite a lot of the time as well. Um, navigation's fairly easy. And, uh, and you can always bail out, you know, off of any one of them and rows down back into Glen Lyon. Um, so yeah, really enjoyed this one. So from here we pushed off the mountain and, and down the kind of visible track towards the kind of south side in, in Glen Lyon. So I'm row number four, done. Okay folks, I'm back on my phone again. Last GoPro battery died. I think the cold's just kind of taking its toll on the batteries. But we're here, we're back at the car park. I'll spin you in, bear with me. Phone box. So, yeah, long time. 20 kilometers that was. Was that seven hours as well? Not bad timing wise, but 20k, that's quite a walk. Um, Terrain was pretty good actually underfoot. There was one section coming off of the third hill, which I think was Carn Merrick, which uh, was quite scrambling the way down over the boulders. Just with the ice, it made that a little bit more technical. But overall, it wasn't too bad, and we found the path and good time anyway. Um, yeah, terrain overall, yeah, it was good. Navigation was fairly easy. Uh, just needed that, that one to do one because it was so cold. But we got it done in the end, so happy with that. Um, yeah, knackered now. Got a two-hour drive home back to uh, back to the Glasgow area. I think uh, I think we've deserved a pint tonight. <laughs> so I will love you and leave you just now. And thanks again for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit the little alert icon so you get notified when the new content comes out. And I'll leave you for now. So till next time, folks. Take care.